Um, welcome. Happy Friday afternoon. Um, sorry, I have an alarm that goes off at four o'clock every day to tell me that it's time to cook dinner. And I wanted to turn that off so it would not go off in the middle of our stream. Um, so welcome to our weekly live free training that we're going to do this week. Um, this week, I am going to be talking about complementary colors because in our membership group this week, we have weekly challenges every week that are different style challenges. They span the whole week. So it's the same challenge. Um, if you just want to do it once, if you wanted to try to do it all week, um, you can do it either way. So these are just fun ways to explore different areas of style and fashion and kind of push you to try new things in your wardrobe and experiment with different aspects of style. And our challenge this week was a color contrast challenge. Specifically, the challenge was to wear complementary colors and no one participated. <laughs> um, and so what I really wanted to do was talk about this because a question was asked in the group um, the other day. Let me go find it. Uh, not that group. It's fun. Yeah. Um, let's see. And so it brought up this idea of why no one really tackles the complementary colors. So just as a quick overview, um, the challenge this week specifically says a uh, color contrast week Explore outfits featuring complementary colors, which are those opposite each other on the color wheel. And the question that was asked in regards to this the other day was, um, has anyone been working on the color contrast challenge this week? Um, um, and nobody really did. And so there were some comments there talking about it. But the reality with contrasting colors or complementary colors is that they're really hard for most people to wear. And it's because of things like color theory and value and some different things that I'm going to talk about today um, in relation to why this is so hard um, and give you a little background on complementary colors um, and talk about, you know, why, why this is so hard, why people don't typically do this um, and defining them. So before we really get into any of that, I am going to share with you what a complementary color is, right? Um, so let me get this pulled up right quick. And I'll share it with you. Where are we? Hmm. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. Okay. So let's talk about complementary colors. Here we go. Okay, so this is a color wheel of 12 colors. It's called a Munsell color wheel. Um, and it's, you know, when you think about basic color theory, we're talking about the original six colors, right? The three primary and the three secondary, um, which would be red, blue, and yellow, or your primary, a little review here, orange, violet, and green being your secondary colors. Um, and so the Munsell color wheel will add six more colors in between these. So you get a, a larger range of colors that you can look at and think about. And so I'm just going to use this to kind of describe to you what complementary colors are. So complementary colors at the base are those that are directly across from each other on the color wheel right here. So red and green, orange and blue, yellow and violet. Um, these are the traditional set of complementary colors when you're talking about just your basic six color color wheel. Now, the reason that these are so hard for people to wear typically is because what falls opposite, most people typically, when they're building their wardrobe and they fall into seasonal color analysis, and we're talking about, um, especially in regards to hue here, which is warm versus cool, we're looking at usually people stick to one area of the color wheel, right? And so if it's just a, a purely warm versus cool split, it kind of splits eh, kind of right here down the middle, honestly. And so people will be over here, like for me, for example, most of my wardrobe falls in this range right here. Um, and so for me to wear a complementary color, I have to flip over here. 
Um, and, and to be honest, I don't own many things in this range because they're not my most flattering colors. And so, and obviously owning them complicates my wardrobe. It gives me more things to think about, more things to choose, um, more questions, more problems, more decisions, more decision fatigue. And so most people tend to gravitate to certain colors um, and they typically share specific attributes, which we talked about last week. Um, and so when you talk about complementary colors, you're talking about choosing colors that are really opposite your natural best colors. And that is the thing that makes it hard to really match these and to create outfits using them. The other thing that makes it difficult is that complementary colors are by their very nature, high contrast. And many people don't have the chroma to be able to pull it off, right? They need lower contrast colors. Um, they need softer colors together. They don't need such a, a glaring, harsh contrast. And so, these are the two things that can make it really difficult to think about putting together outfits with complementary colors. Now, I would love to show you a couple nifty little trick things. Um, the first one is uh, over here. Let me find it again. Just a second. So if you're not familiar with these, um, a couple years ago, I created these seasonal color guides. There is, there's one for each of the 12 seasons. Um, and there's a link for you guys below if you've never seen these before. But um, these have so much information about each season. But one of the things that is in here are complementary colors already created for you. So I pulled Clear Winter because I'm a Clear Winter. And I just wanted to show you um, kind of, you know, you see the red and the green, pink and a green also. But these are all figured out for you already. So if you were interested in complementary colors, they're right here and you don't really have to think about it so much. Um, the guide also includes analogous colors and triad colors, which are some other color combinations. If you're feeling stuck and you're looking at a way to really dig deeper into your season, um, this is a really great product for you. Um, like I said, the link is below. Um, you can grab those if you have never seen these before. The other really cool thing uh, is this Adobe Color Wheel app. And so I wanted to kind of show you, number one, how to use this, and then I'm going to use it as well to talk about how to get the most out of your wardrobe. So the way that you use this, if you're looking for complementary colors, and it works for the other types of color combinations as well, but I'm only going to talk mostly about complementary today. So what you do, um, you need, you can drag this around wherever you want it to be. Um, you can do whatever you want. Um, but what you can also do is um, use hex codes. So you can go to Canva and um, you could, let's see, let's just, let's just create a document, a square one. So you can uh, pick a color and obviously I have my I'm in my business account, so I have a lot of different colors here. But let's just pick a color like, hmm, let's pick a plum color, sort of. So you can pick this color, and then you can go to this little plus sign here, and it will give you this six-digit code. This is called a hex code. It's a numerical code which identifies numbers. You can copy it and then go back over to this Adobe app and paste it in the middle. So your target color is the one that's in the middle right here. And it will show you... Over here are just some variations of the purple. Just ignore those here. But it will show you complementary colors for the purple. And what you find is that this tool tends to match the value, which is one of the things I was going to talk about in a minute when it comes to how to utilize this in the best way. Because if you think about these colors, um, this color right here, let me go back over here. Um, I will actually just... You know what? I'll actually just do this. So when we talk about this, right? Um, so these two colors, not what I wanted to do. You can see that they both share. They're both dark colors, right? Um, and so they share value in that way. Even the lighter color here it shares an attribute with the other one, and that is that it is slightly brighter, unlike the other one is dark. However, you would not likely 
want to wear this darker purple with this really light lime green, right? Because they, one is a pastel essentially, and the other is a deeper, brighter color. Um, and while they are somewhat technically complementary colors, they really don't share the same attributes. And so wearing them is going to look even more high contrast than it normally would with your colors. And so you can do it with, like I said, you can do it with any color. We could change it to, uh, let's change it to a light blue because I really do want to show you how, for example, a lighter season who has less contrast can still use this method um, to pick some nice colors. Um, so this one's a little dark, but you could go with a brown color. And so you end up with a, almost a neutral with a blue, but you could also pick this lighter color and you get a complementary mix of colors here. Um, I'll do another pastel, I think. Yeah. Wow. I'm being really slow today. Okay, let's go with another one. Let's go with a really light purple. Yeah. Yeah, you can see like these two colors together look just nuts now. <laughs> um, so here we go. So a purple and you get but see what you can see here is this is pretty light. It's almost a white color, but you get a light purple color and an olive color, which if you think about some of the softer seasons, soft summer, um, soft autumn, for example, that didn't go like I wanted it to. These share the attributes, right? Even though we're talking about complementary colors, this isn't a glaring contrast. Um, olive can often be considered a neutral. So putting this light purple with it would be a really nice look. And you're not going to get that glaring red and green kind of split that you get in a true, you know, let's talk about a, a red here. See if I can get you a true red. You know, a true red and a bright green. Like this is very Christmassy, right? And not a lot of people want to wear this unless it's Christmas. <laughs> so, um, so it's just a little color theory information there. Um, I'm going to check some comments. Um, you guys can leave comments. I don't see any. Um, so having said that all about color theory and talking about why it's difficult, um, how complementary colors are often on opposite sides of the color wheel. They're often off, often opposite hue attributes from what you have. So, just finding a way to make it work for you if you're interested in this is one way to do it. But I did want to give you um, three tips for wearing complementary colors um, specifically. The first one I talked about, and I have some examples here. So the first one I talked about, I'm going to go over here so I can see what I'm Okay. The first one I talked about was sticking with the value, right? So I showed you guys the red and green, which is very much a Christmas color combination. Um, I personally don't wear a lot of red because I find it really hard to match for the most part. Um, and I will tell you, I have very little true complementary colors in my wardrobe because most of those colors, like I said, are on the opposite side of the color wheel and I just don't want to own them. However, I was able to pull a couple things out of my closet to kind of give you guys an illustration. So talking about a red and a green, um, talking about a red and a green. So this is a maroon actually with a lot of different colors. And then we have a deep forest green. So you're getting the same idea, but it's a little bit less intense. It's not quite as, um, it's not quite as in your face as the red and green would be. So the first thing is gonna be to stick with the value, which is what I showed you also with that lilac color and the olive green. They share similar attributes. They're both somewhat soft. They're both somewhat light. You know, you're not, you're not mixing a really dark color with a really light color. So this is tip number one is to um, watch your attributes and match your value. The second tip I have for you is to use really small accessories. And I'm actually demonstrating this tip today uh, with my one true pretty much um, con uh, complimentary color. So I'm wearing like a purple today, a plum color. And purple, if you look at um, the color wheel, which I have another one here as well. So you get purple, which is where my finger is. And then there's yellow over here. So purple and yellow are complements. Um, 
And the only yellow thing I own is this scarf right here. And so my second tip for you, if you want to incorporate some complementary colors, is to choose very small accessories where it's a very small pop of color and not something that's really in your face, overwhelming, super loud. And then you can even see that I took um, and, I, and I covered up most of it with a scarf. So it's literally just a tiny peak of accessories there. The final piece of advice I have for you, um, I want to go back to the Adobe tool and show you. Um, it's called the split complement. That's not it. It's called the split complement. So the split complement. So back to our color theory one more time to review it. A complementary color are two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. The split complement gives you two colors and each of them is beside the actual complement. And so you typically get a little bit softer mix of colors here. So for example, instead of red and green, which they're still giving you some greens over here on this side of the split, but you're getting a teal now. This is a much more harmonious combination for many people. Still bright, obviously we've got a really bright red, but even if I were to take that red down um, to a softer, maybe coral color, you can see that the teal becomes more muted as well. And so this is a different combination. So I'm going to show you this one. Um, I have this one as well. Um, so this is this is well, I would, how I would do this split complement. So it's a coral color um, with a teal color. Um, and you can see that this one is just not as bright. It's not as obvious. The colors aren't nearly as glaring and striking against each other. And so you're able to kind of get that effect of high contrast without going all the way in on high contrast. And... I hope this was educational and interesting. Um, really just, you know, talking about color theory, the more you talk about it and the more that you think about it, the more that you're able to really embrace and utilize your own color season because you can understand, again, basically going back to those attributes of colors, right? Do they share the same hue? Do they share the same chroma? Do they share the same value? And when you're looking at those things, it can really help you to understand how colors function. Um, and then you can begin to utilize them better in your own wardrobe because you understand the basics of color, um, the, the general principles of color theory. And instead of, you know, having a color fan in your hand and saying, well, this color doesn't match my fan. Is it a good color? Right. A color fan. I have some right here. Should have been prepared. Sorry. Um, let's say you have a color fan. This is a warm autumn one. Let's say you have a color fan in your hand, right? And you're out shopping and you, you're like, this, you know, this color doesn't match what's the shirt. Is it going to work for me? Um, instead of hemming and hawing over it and not being sure if it's going to work for you, you can ask yourself, okay, so this is a warm color. It's a medium value color. And the chroma is, I would call the chroma medium on this. Um, you ask yourself the same questions about the piece of clothing in your hand, right? And that just helps you to better understand your colors in general. And so having said that, today is also the very last day of the birthday color analysis sale. If you are interested in that, um, time runs out tonight at midnight central, which I think is 2, no, it's 2 p.m. Pacific, I think. <laughs> I think I said it like that. Anyways, um, you can get a done-for-you color analysis for only $97 as a birthday special. Um, there are a couple of spots left, I think, so um, you can still take me up on that offer. You can go to professionalcoloranalysis.com to take advantage of that. And I hope everyone has a great weekend. I loved talking with you again today, and I will see you next time.